This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. Welcome, welcome to Matt Mayer on air. Jane Matt Mayer, Greg Bach, and Calvin Butenhoff all coming to you live from Civic Media's world headquarters here in Madison, Wisconsin. You can always join us. You can call. You can text. The number is the same, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Dan Schaefer from the Recombobulation recombobulation area there you go it's the words words are words are tricky words are tough tricky words yeah uh, he will be here at 10 33 coming up after the 11 o'clock news state senator diane hesselbein in the 27th senate district will join us to talk about some of the election results and of course as we do every day now we wrap it up with is that this shouldn't be a thing stick around for that this is a cheese grater update an update yes. cheese grater update yeah. uh coming your way at 11.51. Yes, it is Wednesday, November 6th. Things did not necessarily work out the way that we had hoped. Agreed. Yes. Uh, lots of scenarios to work through. Uh, still getting more information from uh, states to be called. But what we do know is that Donald Trump will be the 47th president of the United States of America. Correct. Uh, he was declared the winner in Wisconsin early this morning. Yes. Uh, AP called the race for Donald Trump shortly after 4.30 Local time, unofficial results. This is from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, showing Donald Trump with about a one-point edge, approximately 41,000 votes on Kamala Harris. That was after more than 95% of the votes were tabulated in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's 10 electoral votes brought Trump over the 270 threshold and cemented his, and cemented his return to the White House as the 47th president. Of course, many, many other races on the ballot last night. Yes. And Wisconsin did have some victories. Yes, we did. And that's and that's one thing, you know, we definitely want to talk about is that I think Wisconsin had a big victory last night as far as when it comes to the fair maps. Absolutely. And what comes to uh, when we do have fair maps, which is better choices in candidates for elections. <clears throat> and there is definitely some some great winners in there going to bring their expertise and their passion for Wisconsin to Madison in the upcoming year. Yeah, definitely. In the 14th Senate District, Democrat Sarah Kayuski defeated Republican John uh, Joan Balweg, rather. That's in the 14th Senate District by about a 2% margin. Balweg, a longtime lawmaker, and Kayuski is a mental health counselor who has no previous political experience. Balweg was the incumbent, but the new district had changed, mm-hmm. referring to the fair yep. maps. Uh, they were vastly different uh, than the lines that uh, held under the old map. The new seat includes all of Richland and Sauk counties and parts of several others, including Dane County. So that victory to uh, Democrat Sarah Kayeski. Another win for the Democrats was in the 30th Senate District. Democrat Jamie Wall defeating Republican Jim Rafter. That's in the Green Bay area, an open seat. Uh, Jim Rafter, uh, Jamie Wall defeating Jim Rafter by about 5%. It's pretty good. That is pretty that's healthy. A pretty good, that's a pretty healthy margin. It absolutely it? is. Yeah. Uh, Wall is a business consultant who ran unsuccessfully for the House in 2012. Rafter spent a career working in the tech sec- uh, sector. He has spent the uh, last eight years on the Alloway Village Board. Hmm. Eighth Senate District, Democrat Jody Havish uh defeating Republican Dewey Strabel. Incumbent incumbent Dewey Strobel uh, will not be going back to Madison next year. It's a new opportunity, Dewey. It's a, it's a, it's yes, it definitely. He, it's he, a new opportunity. Find new things to do, but yeah. Uh, Dewey Strobel has been in the legislature for 14 years, including nine in the Senate. But again, thanks to the fair maps, uh, the district was about 80% new to him. Mm-hmm. So Jody Habish Sinekin will fill the current seats held by Republican Senator Dan Canodal. He ran for the state assembly and said the 8th Senate District was part of the battle for the suburbs. This is from WPR uh, that had once been dominated by Republicans. And we have been seeing some Democrats making inroads into some of those more suburban counties. 
counties. Absolutely. Counties and areas that have been seen as red for a long time, as the younger as younger people start to go back to those areas, they're starting to bring more of a purplish vibe to them or blue vibes. And and uh, also 18th Senate District, uh, Kristen Alfheim, it looks like she's on her way to victory. It has not, as far as we know, yet been called, but is, she is currently winning in the count. So if she does that, it's another uh, Democrat who is going to the state Senate in Madison next year, which is severely undercutting the majority lead that the Republicans had up there right. for many, many, many years. Many years. Yes. Yes. And again, I think going back to the to the maps and the redrawing of the maps, Wisconsinites want to see things get done. Yes. That's... We're tired of the gridlock. We're tired of money getting approved and then sitting in the legislature, not getting distributed, mm-hmm. even though it had been approved. Yeah. And I think I think Wisconsinites are fed up. I think so, too. I think something, that's something you've been talking about since the maps were redrawn, since uh, Janet Proce, which was was elected as, to this Wisconsin Supreme Court, it, you know, Wisconsinites just want to move forward. That is our motto. Forward is our motto, and you can't do that with gridlock. And last night's elections for the for the Assembly and the Senate really showed that people wanted new ideas there to get things done. And yep. we'll, I, I'm personally very excited to see what will happen. Uh, you know, will will Robin Voss retain his assembly speakership? Don't know at this point. We don't know at this we point. We do not know at this point. But you, with all these new faces and new energy, it'll be something to watch in 2025. Absolutely. Yeah. We would like to see things get accomplished. I would love that. I think, lo- I I think we can that. all agree on that. I, I think, would love that. I think a vast majority of us, with all of the other things we may not agree upon, we would like to see things get done for our communities and for our kids. And I'm also curious how you are feeling today. Yeah. What you're feeling. 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. As we said, Dan Schaefer from the Recombobulation area will be here at 1033, and we will be talking more politics next hour. We'll lighten things up a little bit. But how are you feeling after last night's election? I went to bed about 1030. I went to bed around 1030 and I purposely turned off uh, any sort of news because I needed to sleep. So yes. I found I, I found a channel with a Big Bang Theory uh, marathon happening. I'm like, all right, this is perfect. Perfect. We can do this. And I woke up at 1.30 this morning and said, don't check your computer. And just, you did. Don't just just don't te- check your computer. Okay, I'll just check to see where they're at right now. And I don't think I went back to bed that night last night it just kept you awake it just kept me awake it kept me you know uh you know it kept me worried but the point is we're here where we're at now the election has been called we know the results and another thing i want to talk about too is that there can be no claims now on how or how not safe our elections are i'm glad you brought that up we have tremendously secure secure safe fair elections they don't always bring you the candidate you want to the office and that's i'm speaking only for myself in this room i can't speak for anyone else it's not what i wanted but in every sense it was also done with with uh professionalism with accuracy with the point of counting those ballots correctly and doing nothing else well it's just interesting that as as the day went on yesterday and there were there were different. Fe- it was kind of a wavy kind of day, right? Yes. As was... far as thinking, well, this this might come out, you know, with the, the Democrats on top, and then, yep. and at that point, some on the right were already shouting voter fraud, and there's the yeah. terrible things happening in these areas where it looks like Harris might be winning, and uh, Ron Johnson actually went down to Central County in Milwaukee yesterday. He did. He went down there and he checked everything out, and and to his credit, and that's not something I say often, but to his credit, he left saying these are. Fair. These everything's being run professionally. Everything's being done correctly. He didn't. Was that the, before the results came in? That was before. That was, so he went down before those thirty thousand were re recounted. Not recounted. They were re. The, there's a different tabulated. Because, yeah, they, like rerun through. Okay, right. And and he checked it out. Everything was good, and he just he walked away with no. There was from what I had seen, no big like story following him saying they're trying to take our election. They just they did the work they needed to do. Um, I know that the the president elect is was on his on his social media website saying that there was cheating in Pennsylvania. 
Secretary of Pennsylvania, Secretary of State of Pennsylvania said, nope, it's not, not happening. It's not happening to when there were when there were reported bomb threats happening in Georgia. The Secretary of State of Georgia came up and said, everything's being run well. We're doing everything we can. Please make sure to vote. And like it, it any sort of roadblock that was being thrown up by anyone was being taken down immediately because our 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 elections are safe and they're secure and they're fair. So that is something that for me personally, I thought about this morning before I came into work today. I was like, but it all ran smooth. And that's an important thing. Would it, would, do you think Ron Johnson would have done the same thing if they felt that the election was not going their way at that point? I'd love to say yes, but, you know, I mean, he would have had no, no proof, which never stop, has never stopped him in the past. But, you know, it just, I think, would have made him look ridiculous had he said they're trying to steal the election. And there's no proof whatsoever, because that's the other thing, too, is when these secretaries of states come out, they're not like they're not. They're just like, yes, we're, we're running correctly. They're running safely. Thank you very much. I'm going to go back to my office and work now. It's never a fighting sense or a antagonistic sense. It's just, we're great. Can I go back to work, please? So, had, you know, could he have? Yeah, of course he could. He's said many things before that I don't agree with and that are untrue. But he didn't, and, and I will give him credit for that. We give Rojo credit where credit is due. See that, folks? Look I'm, at that. I'm open to things. Absolutely. Yeah, there Absolutely. you go. Uh, Todd in uh, in Oshkosh, listening on WISS, says, I feel like we need to work on why the Democratic messaging isn't connecting with folks in our communities. That's just my opinion. And that's a valid opinion, Todd. Certainly, I think that uh, the Democrats felt that they had been doing a good job. That's a complaint I've heard about the Democratic Party in Wisconsin for a long time, mm -hmm. that their messaging is not good. It's not concise. It's not cohesive. It's, you know, one thing that... That Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, did, I personally feel like they didn't do pro before that there was ever him dropping out, was not properly getting out there and talking about the economy and how great it was doing. People con continually thought the economy was terrible. Right. And on paper, it is not. And that's something that they'll have to come to reckon with for the next election. We will continue this conversation, Tom. We see you on the line. Hang on. We will be right back. You are listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. She don't mean no She just don't know what else to do about it. Change. You're listening to Civic Media. You can tune into any of our live shows on any radio station across the state with the Civic Media app. Find us in your phone's app store and listen anytime, anywhere. Welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Sweet Cal B coming to you live from our Civic Media World Headquarters here in Madison, Wisconsin. You can always join us. You can call. You can text. The number is the same, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. The Recombobulation Area's Dan Schaefer and Civic Media's political consultant will be joining us at 1033 to recombobulate things. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of folks were up very late. I have a feeling Dan was up very late. I know Todd was. Oh, a lot of people here at Civic Media got between 38 minutes and an hour and a half of sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, give or take, as our guy behind the scenes is saying. Donald Trump has been elected as 47th president of the United States. I believe Kamala Harris is expected to make her concession speech about 6 o'clock tonight. I've heard four. I've heard this evening. Yeah, I think between four and six. Yeah. But we will, uh, we will keep you advised. On that, uh, Tom from L.A. has been very patient on the line. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, Jane. Um, well, first off, we the people ultimately are the government. And I, as much as I don't like it, 50% um, of the country, um, you know, voted one way. Yep. Um, I would like to say, though, that the right wing or the voters last night do not like people who speak about policy or intelligentsia. They don't want someone who's thoughtful or educated. 
They want someone who just reacts, shoots from the hip, and is an Al Bundy figure or reality show WWF or UFC jughead. They like their straight, white, Anglo-Saxon Protestant men who is their bro and who doesn't speak intelligently or academically because you are the enemy, just like it was in the 1930s when they went after the intelligentsia on and on. They don't like smart women because they are so scared of them also. Kamala Harris and people like Kristen Wiley were the best candidates uh, in America. I don't think Kamala Harris could have done anything else. They still want Joe Dad Bod to be the one who runs the country. Well, and there is a, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And I think there is a reality show component now to American politics. Oh, God. That, I mean, that, that there didn't, used to be to this extent yeah i mean you've now got i mean it's politics as entertainment i i shared with you off the offline or before the show yesterday about this i have a friend of mine who lives in england works in the labor party and he asked me if there were any restrictions around reporting on the election in the u.s because in the uk you're not allowed to report on anything which could influence the results so no discussion of voting polling patterns turnouts etc it means leaders turning up to the polling stations to become very obvious set piece the idea that this country couldn't talk about this stuff on the day of the day before the day after is i mean it was hilarious that he asked that question i'm like our national news our 24-hour news scene would have to shut down for a day oh absolutely that would that would that is unheard of that would never happen and but it makes me wonder, like, all right, what if we did that? What if we had a thing where, all right, our election is a month long, the day before, everything's shut down, people get Can't to vote. talk about it. Can't talk about it. There's no signs. There's no yard signs, no commercials. That would be insanity. It would be insanity in this. People would lose their minds. Tom from L.A., thank you so much. We're going to move on. We've only got a couple of minutes. We have a couple of other folks lined up. C.J. from Beaver Dam, uh, first time I believe you're calling into our show, C.J. Good morning. Hey, Good morning. I, uh, it, it actually is the first time um, I've been up since the election, Yeah, sadly. Um, I'm a 12-year veteran serving both the Constitution and my country, and I was so disheartened. And I started thinking throughout all the night, throughout the process, in 2016, Hillary won 3 million popular votes and lost the election because of the electoral college. And I'm seeing that Kamala lost by 5 million popular votes. And in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was applications given to China and were given to the family in 2018 or granted to the Trump family in 2018 for voting machines. Now, why a fashionista needs voting machines, I have no clue. I'm not sure what your point is, CJ. My point is there's something seriously nefarious that I can smell fish. It's, it's not putting two and two together that an 8 million point spread between winner and loser, and yet the electoral college, basically it was supposed to be one person, one vote, but it's not. No, it's not because- No, and it hasn't been for a long time. Thank you, CJ, appreciate you checking in. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean that, is, that is definitely something that people have been talking about for a long time is the electoral college, and it's the, it, it, the presidential race is the only one we use it for, and it can make someone like Hillary Clinton, who won the popular vote, lose the election that's something that will it ever be reckoned with i have no idea at this point jack from merrimack thank you for your patience jack thank you for joining us we got about two and a half minutes left uh, left jack what did you want to say uh you know what i find most frightening about this well two things really um one of the things is that this administration that just got elected clearly is not going to do anything about climate change and that is that is probably the biggest issue in 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 the world at this point however locally that is to say in terms of of america what i find frightening about this is that online 
there are so many comments from the winning side that are still full of hate and fear and anger and gloating. And they, they, they're still continuing to seek to divide America. And that, if anything, is what can conceivably lead to the downfall of this country. Putin and Xi and, and, and Kim couldn't be happier to see this country divided because what will happen eventually if that continues, if we don't start working together, is um, we are going to become a second-rate country. And, and, uh... Thank you, Jack. Um, and I think, I think, at least for us going forward, mm-hmm. the goal is to find things on which we still agree. Yes. And can come together to hopefully find solutions to. And we're going to talk more about that in the state of Wisconsin, at least. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Jack. You're right. And we got to move forward and we have to do it together. We got to work together. Absolutely. News is coming up next when we return. Dan Schaefer will be here. I hope you can stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. You're an organ donor, right? Well, here's a tragic fact. Approximately 20 people die each day waiting for precious donated organs. You could make a life-saving decision simply by getting that important dot on your driver's license. That little dot shows those who need to know that you've made a decision to donate organs at a critical time. Go to HeroicDeed.com to learn more about the importance of organ donation and how you can make your wishes known. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. HeroicDeed.com I'm discombobulated It's grounds to be frustrated Good morning and welcome back to Matt Nair on here. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Sweet Gal B coming to you live from our Civic Media headquarters here in Madison, Wisconsin. You can always join us. You can call or text the number is the same. It's 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. We are joined on the big desk by the man <laughs> who got about three and a half hours of sleep last night, Dan Schaefer from the Recombobulation area. Thank you for carving out some time for us. How are you doing? Oh, always a treat to join you, Jane and Greg. Glad to see you. Good to see you guys let's, today. Let's start Good off. Good to see some friendly faces. Absolutely. Yeah. Some <laughs> smiling faces. Um, Let's talk about Tammy Baldwin. Yeah. Not, it was close. It's very close. It's very I don't close. think there has even been quite the AP call yet. Uh, it is, We're it still is waiting. extraordinarily yeah, close. I think you're There's been some other calls, Decision Desk, which has been typically out front uh, of a lot of these calls, has her head. Some of my sources that I've been checking with think she's going to hang on. Uh, it looks like she's going to win. So a bright spot in an otherwise uh, pr- pretty dark night uh, yeah. for Democrats across the country. Uh, you know, I, as I noted here, taking a look at the taking a look at the results, you know, two years ago, when Ron Johnson won re-election over Mandela Barnes, that was the closest Senate election Wisconsin had had in 100 years. Mm-hmm. This one looks like it's even closer. Uh, just a margin of, I think it's going to be, for both races, I think the margin will be less than less than 30,000 votes. Well, that's just crazy. Yeah. And that's a long turnaround from where we were a few months ago when, you know, Eric Humpty was fairly new in the campaign. Those polls that were coming out saying, oh, Tammy's got to be like... T- 12, 15 points, 10 points. And we always knew that it was going to tighten. Mm-hmm. But in the last like month, it really tightened to the point where we were like, I, we're not sure. Because it almost, it, Eric, Hefty, Eric Hefty was never a joke can, candidate. But it seemed like a lot of people were treating it as, oh, Tammy's just going to walk right back into the job but it was a it was a fight right and and there was a lot of money that got pumped into that race late mm-hmm. in Big late in the time. game yes uh, that obviously is going to be a factor in this but i think you know just look at the at the larger landscape of, of what this election portends here and it, it, as you look at where things shifted from 2020 to now 
it's it's kind of looking like a red wave type election. Yeah. And I think the fact that Baldwin was able to hang on despite those dynamics, despite the Hovde camp tying her to uh, the unpopular incumbent Democratic president, Joe Biden, um, and, and talking about, you know, she's she's uh, she's changed all of these different things that we saw in the messaging. Right. Um, you know, I, I and I also think the fact that, you know, it's a it's a presidential year. I think everybody should have always expected this race to be extremely close. And in Wisconsin, we have extremely close presidential elections. It, it, we're adding this one to the tally that five of the last seven presidential elections in Wisconsin are going to be decided by a less than one percent margin. The only two outside of that had Barack Obama on the ballot mm. with Barack Obama not on the ballot. It's going to be an <laughs> incredibly close election in the state of Wisconsin. So I think, you know, Hovde ran, I think, about a point or two behind uh, Trump ultimately at the end of the day. Uh, and, and I think that is um uh, that that is you know going to going to carry things for Trump obviously, uh, but I think Baldwin eking this one out in an inc- incredibly close race um, does speak to to her ability to to win if it's a small one, but that small level really matters. I want to go back to what you were saying though about the money that was being pumped in. I know that you know Mitch McConnell gave about seventeen or eighteen million dollars to the campaign through PAC funds and also, you know, the, the, and that's when you saw the turn on the language, you know, Eric Humphrey spent the first half of his campaign. I'm a guy in Wisconsin. I'm going to sit in lakes. I'm going to throw axes. I'm going to drink a beer and be a guy. And, and, and I understand that he had some ground to, to make up because he's not a household name here in the state. But once that money started coming in, that's when the ads started to get really nefarious and dark talking about not even just, you know, Tammy Baldwin's a lifelong politician. It was it was being really, uh, I would say, disgusting when it came to how it treated trans people and trans mm-hmm. children. And that's where they had to go to make a real impact with them was to go to that dark messaging, which I personally, uh, regardless of what who I'm voting for as a part as a person, I just didn't like. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It, it certainly was a major theme uh, of the campaign messaging down the stretch. Uh, and I think just that was the that was the hand that they were dealt. I think the the path that they had was to just go super negative. Yeah. And, and they had to go super negative in, in order to win because nothing else was really working for them. But it does seem like ultimately Baldwin will be reelected. I still fail to see the appeal of Eric Hovde. I, I really do. And I, I mean that. I mean, I'm sure he's a very nice man. He's he's worked in charities and, and that's wonderful and lovely. And he's been very successful in business. But the fact that he did not know what was in the farm bill and said it on the debate stage, I, I, I if I were a farmer, I would find that unforgivable. Yeah. Completely unforgivable. Yeah. How could you not educate yourself about something that is so vital to the state? Yeah, and I think it's just a, a matter of just how close we have elections in Wisconsin. It may be anybody with an R next to their name right. who had this type of financial resources, who had this type of, you know, red wave type of election was going to be in position to potentially win. But uh, again, at the end of the day, it's 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 going to be yet another nail biter election in Wisconsin. <laughs> and yay, we get to and be... a split result. Yeah, here, and, right? we, and we continue to be the focus of. All kinds of political attention. Yay, us. Hooray. Wisconsin. <laughs> Here we are. Yay. Uh, Bob from Milwaukee texting in, I'm not a big TV watcher, but when I saw some of the Packer game last Sunday, I saw ads regarding immigrants pouring in at the border. They were Eric Hovde ads. There was only one ad I saw from Baldwin saying the Hovde ad was a lie. I think people believed the border lies. The Dems didn't have an answer. Just like four years ago when the Repul- Republicans ran ads against Mandela Barnes, and they got no response. What a disaster. I, I want to talk about that immigration point, though, because I think that's an interesting one, because Republicans clearly were winning on this issue yes. throughout the campaign. You know, you looked at all of these Marquette polls it was showing that, like, Trump and Republicans had a huge advantage on immigration and border security. And I think Democrats' message on this was to try to pass this kind of, like, Republican light bill uh, early in the year to say, hey, we were able to do something. Mm-hmm. Trump scuttled the process. Right. And then there was, the message then was, well, we tried to pass this, but Trump wouldn't let us. And I don't think that was a good message. And I don't think that really countered what Republicans were you know, proposing the, the mass deportations now signs that we saw at the RNC. I just don't think Democrats ever clearly articulated 
a position on, on immigration well, and on, on the border. And, I, and it, like you could, you know, say that, yes, we're going to you know beef up border security. Yes, we're going to do this. But what is the big picture of what they're trying to do? On this issue, what do Democrats actually stand for when it comes to immigration and border security? I don't think they ever clearly articulated that position. You know, it's not really been clear what uh, what the goals of the Biden administration has been, other to undo some of the executive orders that Trump has done, undo some of the cruelty is the point type of policies right. of the Trump era. But to what? Right. It, it's, what, what are the, path, the, what are the pathways then? Are right? we going yes. to be a pro-immigration party or are we going to be like, oh, the you know, we're trying we're the ones who actually get things done on the border. Like, I just don't think that message really landed. And I think they really ceded that ground to Republicans. And it, as much as there were, you know, I think the Baldwin campaign had some border related campaign ads uh, in the summer. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think they were able to really counter that. And, and I think you that is one of the things that Democrats are going to need to have some real self-reflection on is what actually do they stand for when it comes to immigration and, in and, this country? And, and what's the plan? Right. Yeah. And I, what's the plan? I think that goes back to what we were saying before, of like touting your message better, like with the economy and how great the economy was and the fact that Joe Biden was not out all the time talking about it. I think when it comes to things like immigration, though, anytime that you know, uh, someone who didn't want to vote for Kamala Harris would say, well, what about immigration? You know, the borders are an open border and every every talking point. And, and, and the re- Democrats would say, well, we had a bill and then Donald Trump dive bombed it. They would just be like, I don't care. Right. It's, my questions are unanswered, sir. So it's just like it was it was a no winning. It was a no winning battle here. It felt like sometimes with some of those topics, anytime they try like when. When Tim Walls and when Tim Walls and Kamala Harris both said like we're both gun owners, gun owners, I'm like that doesn't really do anything. Like I mean, yeah. it, it's trying to find those 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 areas to put real policy forward instead. But the problem was is that Kamala Harris had three months. That's the yeah. thing we always have to remember is that if this was a if this was a regular election, regular election, she would have had two years at least because it was she would have been the 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 one to take the torch from Joe Biden as it was once or they stated. were or there were going to be a primary yes exactly or if right. there was going to be right. you know that type of situation and I think you're you're getting it I think what I think the main issue for Democrats is in this race is that Joe Biden should not have run for re-election yeah and making the switch to Harris this summer in July gave Democrats a chance. Yeah. I think with Joe Biden on the ticket, we were looking at probably an even bigger red wave I, election. I, w- I would agree with you. Probably would have, you know, Trump could have potentially won, you know, the next wave of states, Virginia, Minnesota, New Hampshire, yeah. some of those next in. Uh, but I think this gave them a chance. Didn't didn't really work out in yeah. the end, unfortunately. Uh, but I think it really goes back to Joe Biden's decision to run for re-election. And he has been an unpopular president. You know, we can talk about a lot of the things that I do think he was a successful president in a lot of ways, passing the bipartisan infrastructure law, CHIPS Act. Uh, there's there's some serious uh, successes within his record. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I was up in the Fox Valley a couple of weeks ago talking to folks, uh, Gordon Hintz, the former uh, minority leader from Oshkosh, was talking about how those are like your typical Democratic issue, where if you need three sentences to explain it, you've lost. Oh. That's not good. Not good. We need the bite size. We need the candy version, and that's not something that Democrats well, and, are. And again, I think it gets back to what do they actually stand for? Yeah. What do you stand for on immigration? What do you stand for on the economy? Yeah. What What are the positions? And it's not just countering what the Republicans are doing. It's not just, you know, we need to protect this. We need to stop that. What do you stand for? I think that's what the Democratic Party really needs to, to figure out uh, in the wake of this. Did the Democrats make a, a mistake, though, too, in not touting the economy more? And trying to counter the message of, and again, yes, p- grocery prices were high. There were there were many factors because of that, and it wasn't just Biden Harris administration policies. And I don't know. I guess how do you how do you counter someone's re- lived reality? Yeah. I- is the question then? That's the problem, and I think people were thinking of you know pre pandemic. Uh, landscape and just may, maybe being nostalgic for that and just like, hey, things were a little bit easier. Things weren't weren't expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the things weren't as tense and difficult uh, at, at that point uh, as they were now. And I think, you know, it's, it's again gets back to that. Like if you need three sentences to explain it, it yeah. doesn't work because you can argue that 
the American uh, recovery from the pandemic is the best in the world. Yes. We have a thriving economy. We reached near full employment uh, during the Biden years because of this. But people are still angry because things cost more. Housing costs more. You know, and, and some of these larger factors that I think traditionally Democrats have tried to counter mm -hmm. uh, in the past. On, on health care prices or prescription drug prices or housing or uh, all, child care or you know, so many different issues that we're seeing, you know, cost increases over the years. It just became too overwhelming, I think, to overcome. Well, and also when you, I mean, as you said, like if you, you could have a nice discussion, a nuanced discussion, but ultimately people aren't going to listen. They're going to be like, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care about your information. I believe what I believe. It's 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 what you feel instinctually. It's like this is my gut. It's my gut. My it's gut my is gut versus me this. your facts. My gut will right. always win. Win. So you can tell me all you want. And Tammy Baldwin did declare victory early Wednesday. Although again, and this is from the Associated Press. Uh, but again, I don't know that this race has been officially called. Has not been officially, not officially called. called. Huffy has not conceded. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think they're they're lo they're looking at some things. They, this could be in the territory of requesting a recount. You know, yeah. I, I think it is when you are within that 1% margin, uh, you request a recount. If I think it's within like a 0.25 margin, there's an automatic recount. Right. But I think if it's less than that 1% margin, I think the uh, it's on the candidate to pay for it for the recount then too. We are gonna gotcha. continue our conversation with Dan Schaefer from the Recombobulation Area and Civic Media. Stay with us. You are listening to Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Once I get strapped in the two tin, wheels up and we'll be rocking. Getting out of frozen Wisconsin. I need you to recombobulate me. I want you to recombobulate me. I need you to recombobulate me. Won't somebody recombobulate me? You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. Good, good morning. Welcome back to Matt Nair on Air. Jane Matt Nair. Frank Mock, Cal Viente on the board coming to you from our studio at the Civic Media World Headquarters here in Madison, Wisconsin. We are joined by our colleague and the author of the Recombobulation Area, Dan Schaefer, talking about the results after last night's election. Let's move over to the Wisconsin State Assembly. What are some of the things going on there? What are what are we looking at? Yeah, so, what were the good things? So going, I, I'm having an issue with the audio here. Kevin, so you got his mic up. There we go. To hear me. There we there go. We are. Uh, so yeah, taking a look at the landscape in the assembly. Weirdly, there are a couple communities that are still uh, processing some ballots uh, from their various central count facilities. Uh, it looks like we're still waiting on some results in the city of Oshkosh uh, for a key race in the 53rd there, and it's still waiting on results from Oak Creek, uh, and that is going to impact the uh, 21st Assembly District. Uh, that one is a real nail-biter right now. I think it's just a few dozen votes uh, here or there. But we've heard so much over the years about just like, oh, we're waiting for Milwaukee right. and all of that. Right, the it's city just of like, Milwaukee, what's it's going always, on? It's always a blame Milwaukee type of situation, right. but here we have some other communities still, still processing some of those results. But the large larger landscape is the, the the headline, I suppose, is that Republicans will retain the assembly majority. Um, I think that was looking increasingly likely over the course uh, of the campaign and with the results at the top of the ticket going the Republicans direction. You know, I think that is, uh, you know, kind of indicative of where the state was going largely. Uh, so it, for the balance of, for what I'm seeing, they again, a couple of these races might go slightly differently based on those final results from Oshkosh and Oak Creek. Uh, but I think it will end up with a 54 to 45 Republican majority. So certainly nothing close to the near super majority that status got, right. that we had seen for a mm -hmm. long time, yeah. obviously with the new uh, fairer maps that Governor Evers 
signed into law earlier this year. Uh, that it certainly suggested that Democrats were going to be in position uh, to pick up uh, a number of seats. They did so in the La Crosse area, uh, in the uh, Eau Claire area. Uh, many of the districts that are connected to Dane County, um, you know, a couple of others, Green Bay, there was a, a nice win for Democrats, Ryan Spouty in the 89th district there. Uh, and, but I think overall, um, you know, probably it's some disappointment on the Democratic side. I think it was likely that Republicans were going to retain the majority. I think they were in a position to, you know, really make that margin a really tight one. Yeah. Uh, but now I think, uh, you know, the way the shape, it, it, but I think that would have meant a Harris victory as well. Um, and, and so I think, you know, some of these very, very close seats that we see in these swingy districts, um, you know, I think the, the F assembly district 53, which is the Nina Menasha area. That's another one of the closest ones mm -hmm. in the state. The other green Bay seat is going to be extremely close. Uh, the Lou Ann bird is going to lose to Bob Donovan in that Southwestern Milwaukee County race. Uh, so some of the, those that Democrats needed to win, they didn't. And I think the real, the one that is, you know, the, the white whale for Democrats, uh, uh, in the assembly is trying to oust uh, incumbent Republican Todd Novak. Uh, Novak is in <laughs> southwestern Wisconsin, uh, Assembly District 51. He has run clo one close race after close race after close race. The Democrats always try to, to topple him. Yeah. This seemed like with the with the new maps, with part of that district now, including Dane County, that that was going to look like a pickup opportunity for Democrats. And once again, Novak has proved resilient and he is going to win again. So that was kind of the seat that was drifting towards Republicans over the last couple months. And it was one of those where it's just like, if Democrats are going to win the assembly majority, that is one they needed to get and they didn't get it. I'm also dismayed. <laughs> <laughs> Deep I'm, breath. I am dismayed when when you say, again, we're, we're, some of these races are going to come down to a couple of dozen votes. Mm -hmm. There are still many, many people who did not vote this time. Yeah. Yes. We have a lot of people who just elected to sit out and I, I, I sound like your mother. I'm so disappointed. I'm, I'm just disappointed that people don't feel it's important to be part of the process. This is the evidence when you see these races down to a couple dozen votes. Mm -hmm. That should be all the evidence you need to inspire you to just get a little informed and, and cast a ballot. But I think... When it comes down to it, and we've talked about this before, is that we are in the thick of it all the time. We're, we're, this is where we're, we swim. This is where we swim, and, and, the, and the waters are deep. And, and, of course, it makes sense to us because we have a message we're trying to push, which is engagement, civic engagement. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there in the world, and I'm not, I am not passing judgment on them because, you know, you've got your lives. Some people just aren't <laughs> – they're not engaged enough. Or the candidates, neither one of them speak to them. The, the whole process doesn't speak to them. Don't you think, though, too, that the influence of social media has really changed the dynamic, uh, certainly for where people get their information from and what they're sub subjected to in some cases? And I think it's I think it's clouding our critical thinking skills. I think the collapse of local news uh, over the it's last devastating. It's, it's really hurt a lot of communities. And I think you have fewer people focusing on these down ballot races. That's part of why I, you know, spend so much time on this, on this and previewing every last race, because I just think, you know, so much attention in Wisconsin is, is sucked up by the presidential race because we are mm -hmm. one of the handful of swing states that's going to decide things in the electoral college, you know, so much attention. There's always going to be, you know, a top of the ticket Senate or Senate race or gubernatorial race or whatever it might be i think we have to in local communities really focus on you know i think democrats have to focus on sustained organizing and i think the media has to focus on sustained uh coverage yeah. of these type of candidates and races and all of that as well we have news coming up next when we return our guest will be state senator diane hesselbein from the 27th i hope you can stay with us you are listening to matt nair on air this is the civic media radio network
The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about.